or whatever that means. And so I cry sometimes when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out what's in my head. And I, I feel a, a little peculiar. And then I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath. And I get real high and I scream from the top of my lungs. What's going on? And I said, oh, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? And I said, oh, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? Hello, American people. I just fly here from Iraq. I am the most famous Iraqi comedian. I am Hassan Ben Working. I escape from Iraq with only myself and my best jokes. I have jokes for you nice American people. I hope that you like my goddamn jokes. Because if you like my jokes, no one get hurt. I was Saddam Hussein's favorite comedian. He loved my show. He would come to my show at Celebrity Clues Lines in Fallujah. And he would say to me, he say, Falafel Tap, which was my name in Iraq. He said, Falafel Tap, I love your show. You make me and my boys, Uday and Huday, so happy. Is there anyone I can kill or injure for you? <laughs> Saddam Hussein gave me my very own television show in Baghdad called Last Comic Standing. This is the only place you can see me perform. Only place right here, celebrity cruise ship. Because I am a no-fly list. Okay, let me tell you about one of my wives. And I want you should know I love one of my wives very much. Because she gave me my son. Never, never been working. <laughs> and of course, our twins, Kudo and Shuda. <laughs> but everyone knew Saddam. Wherever you went, people knew him. I speak to a man from post office who knew Saddam. He said to me, my name is Tyler Eleanor Johnson. I'm a Scorpio. And I knew Saddam Hussein when he used to work at the post office. <laughs> he was an asshole back then. <laughs> he never had any goddamn money. <laughs> He'd always be walking around the post office saying shit like, may I hold the quarter? <laughs> Do you have a bag of cigarettes? You gonna finish that sandwich. <laughs> Nobody likes his ass. You know what he used to do? He would use up all of his sick days. He would use up all of his sick days and then he would ask people, may I borrow one of your sick days? <laughs> What's up with that bullshit? I'm a gangster, get it? I'm a black gangster. <laughs> Serious. I'm a gangster and I'm the Christmas princess. <laughs> I'm an OGCP dog. I'm original gangster Christmas princess. I 
I have recently joined the gang on deck two. The name of my gang is called the Mashed Potato Gang. And we feel it's much more humiliating to drive by and hit somebody with mashed potatoes and brown beef gravy. Many times our victims have been left standing there saying, I wish that motherfucker had shot me. Now, we used to be called the French Fry Potato Gang, but a lot of the brothers in the gang has cholesterol problems. <laughs> and not the good cholesterol, the bad, the bad cholesterol. Because they have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, just like people, you understand? They got good people and bad people, just like cholesterol. I just made that up. I could be wrong, you know. I don't know for sure, you know, because of my medication situation. I'm on this time release medication that I got from this white devil doctor in Boca Raton. He said, take this and shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's what I'll be doing, but it's on time release. You know, and you never know when that shit gonna be releasing. You just walking around, minding your own business. All of a sudden, boom! What the fuck was that? I imagine it must be my medication. You know, but I don't know for sure, you know, because, because I'm on medication. Shit, you understand what I'm saying? Because I don't understand what I'm saying. And if you understand, shit, tell me. God damn it. Good evening and welcome to the world famous Sin City Comedy Club, casino, theme park, rehab facility, and this Passover, future petting zoo. Anyway, the important thing is that right now, I am officially ready to begin my show. Everything that I have done so far has nothing whatsoever to do with my show. And I completely disassociate myself from the shit you had to just sit through. You deserve better than that. You're not going to necessarily get it from me. But you do deserve better. Now that being said, when my show does begin, and it will momentarily, my show is unbelievable. There's jugglers and clowns and acrobats and little chimps, little chimps on roller skates that skate under your chairs and grab your balls. And then they just skate away. Why? Because they're chimps. Some of you are looking at me like this is a documentary. And it's starting to scare the shit out of me and the animals that I brought with me from the UCLA Primate Center in Los Angeles. Let me take you a minute to tell you about this show, about what you're about to see for the next two hours and 71 minutes. If you are particularly religious, this may not be a good place for you to be right now. If you're, you know, evangelical Christian, Orthodox Jew, Muslims, Muslims, I know you out there. I know you big comedy fans. I just send a shout out to all the Muslims, because I ain't looking for no trouble. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say I'm down with the Muslims. I'm down with Allah. I'm down with a, a, a Latin. I'm down with Ali. I'm down with Al. Anybody named Al? or Ali. I myself am a very religious man. I'm a Mennonite. Our people are from Krypton. And we believe that our Lord and Savior is Superman. A lot of you don't know this, but Superman, much like Jesus, was also born Jewish. Actually, Superman is not even his real name. His real name is Superman. 
Jacob Superman. And he came to Earth from Krypton to escape obvious anti-Semitism. And he lives at the North Pole in his fortress of solitude right next to Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, you're tough to fool. I am not from here. I'm from back east. I'm from China. I'm a China man. Or at least I could be if there was an actual Chinese emergency situation. If there's an emergency and you need a Chinaman, shit, I'll be there. But that's what I'm about, being a Chinaman and being in the roofing business. I'm a roofer and proud of it. Now, I told my boss, man, when I went away from him in the roof of business, I said, I said, you know, I work for you now, but I don't like white people because they smell like wet chickens. Anyway, that was my last day of work. I found out a long time ago, man, I'm too light for heavy work and too heavy for light work. Also, work is for homosexuals. <laughs> and if it's one thing that I am not, it's a worker. <laughs> I was in a Chinese restaurant in San Francisco, let's say three weeks ago, for the purposes of this joke. And my waiter told me a very funny story, which I would like to share with all of you, because I am not particularly busy. This Chinaman goes out drinking with his friends till 5 o'clock in the morning. He comes home completely drunk. He makes, wakes up his Chinese wife and he goes, Hey, baby, how about Lero 69? And she goes, You son of a bitch, you come home 5 o'clock in the morning, drunk out of your mind. Now you want me to go downstairs and make Mongolian beef with snow peas. Mongolian beef with a snow peas. <laughs> Me love you a long time, G.I. <laughs> Mr. Honey. Mr. Honey. You want chicken or pork? You want pork or chicken? You want vegetables? You want vegetables? You too stressed out. No more MSG for you. You pay now! You pay now! Shit, I really got into that. I had a little Vietnam flashback for a second. You know, I remember during the Vietnam War when a couple of buddies of mine saved my life after I had plowed into a snowbank outside of Toronto. I was high on animal tranquilizer and a couple of guys less fucked up than I was saved my life. I will never forget that. But you know, maybe I should. <laughs> this also might be a good time to mention that I am the third in command on this ship. <laughs> There's the captain, who's over there. <laughs> and you're probably saying, if he's over there, what the fuck are we doing over here? Anyway, the captain is the first in command, then the co-captain, and then the comedian. <laughs> and let me tell you something. If anything happens to the captain or the co-captain, if there is such a thing, you're going to need a comedian. But since the captain is here, really give him a round of applause for doing such a great job. He's the highest one on the ship. 